Hello and welcome to Mile High Reefers. I'm Scott Anderson. And for today's reef vlog, I thought we'd do an update on the 210. Now, before we get to that, a couple little things. First, my nephews, Sean and Landon Anderson, have each started their own YouTube channel. It's not reef related, but if you like watching young kids do cool stuff, check out their channels. The links are down below. Now, also, sad news. We've lost one of our favorite fish. So that tribute will be at the end. So without further ado, let's get to the 210. The biggest change that has happened for the 210 tank is I've done my yearly bulb replacement on both the 210 and the frag tanks downstairs. The bulbs have to be changed out yearly because they lose color spectrum and intensity over time. Up top in the 210, I stuck with the ATI Blue Plus bulbs. I love the effect they give on the 210. It gives it a really deep blue, lovely look. Downstairs, I went with the Giesman 16 5Ks. I had been running the Blue Plus bulbs, and really, as standalone bulbs, they're just too blue. They bring out the fluorescence amazingly, but I really like seeing the full range of colors. All the fish are doing extremely well. This tank has eight tangs in it. And I have to say, everything has gone much better than I ever could have expected. There is basically no aggression in this tank towards anybody. Maybe the purple tang on purple tang will do a bit of a tail slap once in a while. But that's it. I am just so happy with the way everything's going. The other interesting thing is my clown pairs have broken up. And now it seems like almost all four clowns are living in the clam. A little bit weird, but interesting. As always, I like to keep you guys informed on the problems that are happening in the tank. And my squamosa clam has got some localized bleaching going on. Now, it's gone through this before without a problem. But this time around, the bleaching has hung out much longer than it has in previous instances. So I hope this doesn't become a long-term issue. The other issue I'm having in my tank is a diatom problem. Now, I don't know what the root cause is for certain, but on the left side of my tank, my sponge started to die off and it fell down into the sand bed and decayed a little bit before I took it out and disposed of it. And it could be that there's some localized nutrients left over from the sponge that all these diatoms are feeding on. I'm not 100% sure that's what it is, but if it doesn't start to go away, I gotta come up with a plan. Really though, the story of this tank is about growth. There is just so much more good than bad here. The colors are really popping and the growth has been amazing. One of the cooler growth stories in this tank is how my purple and orange Montiporas are growing together. They don't seem to be really battling each other to kill each other. They're just more growing together in this interesting spiral shape. I don't think you could replicate this if you wanted to, but it looks really cool. Continuing with the growth story, my Euphelia garden and bubble coral started to grow into each other. So for a while it wasn't a problem. The warfare worked and nobody was really dying. Well, I started seeing heads dying off on the Euphelia garden, so I decided it was time to move the coral around the bubble coral. So now you can see there's a nice wide gap between the two corals. With the continued growth of the Euphelia garden, the larger colonies started smothering the smaller colonies. So I decided to do a bit of printing. I took some of the smaller colonies out and started a whole nother Euphelia garden. Hopefully in time, this little garden will grow big and beautiful like the one on the right side of the tank. The only new addition is this green bird's nest colony. Now, I lost all of my bird's nest when I overdosed on bio pellets. So hopefully this colony will grow big and beautiful like my previous colonies. Everything in the 210 just continues to thrive. I've balanced my calcium and alkalinity for the time being at least, and the growth rates have been just incredible lately. I've been super happy with the way it's all working out. It's been interesting to be at the port of the hobby where I'm no longer just continually adding coral, but to be more maintaining and growing coral. And I have to say, it is a really fun experience. And the sad news is, our longhorn cowfish, George Costanza, has passed away. Now, mistakes were made. First, we didn't quarantine this fish when we first put it in. 
It was an up in the air decision as to whether to quarantine an incredibly difficult fish or put it into a bit of a safer environment. In the end, George Costanza ended up with a little bit of pick. I can't say for certain that that was the root cause of his death, but it definitely didn't help. Now, some of you may be wondering whether he crashed the tank. The answer is no. When I saw the ick on him, I took him out of the tank, put him in quarantine, dosed him in copper, and he was a trooper. He spent two or three days lying on the bottom, doing his best to defeat the ick. In the end, George couldn't beat the ick.